The bowline is one of the most important knots to know. It creates a fixed size loop in a piece of line. This fundamental knot is incredibly versatile in its applications, especially when you consider it alongside all of its closely related variants. This video aims to clear up any of your confusion about the different forms of the bowline that are often mistaken for one another. We'll show you multiple ways to tie it, and give you a single reference video for all of its main variants, how to tie them, and how you can use them, so you can get as much mileage as possible out of the bowline knot. Let's start with the traditional method of tying a bowline. You may have heard a mnemonic for tying the bowline involving a rabbit or a snake going up out of a hole, around a tree, and back down into the hole which is a useful memory device, but equally important is remembering the way in which you should make this first loop, which becomes the hole in our mnemonic. With the rope coming towards you from your left side, you want the loop to follow a counterclockwise path with the working end on the top of the loop. That's counterclockwise with the working end on top. The remaining working end after this loop is what forms the actual bowline loop, so make sure you have an adequate amount of line for the size of the loop you want to make. Now we can proceed with the rabbit mnemonic. The working end acts as the rabbit, and the standing end acts as the tree. The rabbit comes up out of the hole, goes around the back of the tree from right to left, and back down into the hole. Dress the knot and it's complete. When finished, the tag end should be coming out in the middle of the bowline loop. One great feature of the bowline is the ease with which it's untied, even after heavy loading. To untie it, grab a hold of this U-shape and pry it forward to loosen up the knot. Then you can free up the tag end and the knot will come apart. The snap bowline method is my favorite way of tying the bowline knot. The resulting knot is exactly the same as the bowline we've already looked at, it's just a different method for arriving at the same knot. It begins with a slip knot loop. Make the slip knot by forming a loop, then taking a bite from the standing end and feeding it into that loop. Leave this slip knot slightly loose as it helps the knot snap into place in the next step. Feed the working end into the slip knot loop, then pull the standing end and the loop in opposite directions until the bowline snaps into place. Dress the knot and you've made a bowline. When tying around a fixed object, it helps to gently hold the working end of the knot in the direction of the object and in the middle of the bowline loop as you snap it into place to coax the tag end into the correct position, dressing the knot more quickly. This is the fastest method and in my opinion, the easiest to remember. It's also sometimes called the lightning method or the rapid method, among other names. To help understand some of the coming bowline variants, let's take a look at the relationship of the bowline to the sheet bend. The sheet bend is another fundamental knot for joining two lines which has the same structure as a bowline, except that in the bowline, this tag end is connected to the same line to form a loop. The standard sheet bend is known as the right hand sheet bend, and both tag ends are on the same side of the knot. This is analogous to the standard bowline, which we've already looked at. When the tag ends of a sheet bend are on opposite sides, this is known as the left hand sheet bend, and it's analogous to a subtle variation on the bowline known as the cowboy bowline, also called the Dutch bowline or the left hand bowline. And this is our next variant. You can use the same traditional method with the rabbit hole mnemonic to tie a cowboy bowline. Just go from left to right around the tree instead of right to left, so that the tag end comes out on the outside of the loop. You can also get a cowboy bowline using the snap bowline method discussed earlier. It just depends on which way you feed the working end through the slip knot loop. This way yields a traditional bowline, and this way yields a cowboy bowline.
There has been debate over the years about the reliability of the cowboy bowlin as opposed to the traditional bowlin, largely stemming from claims made in the classic Ashley Book of Knots. Ashley wrote that the left-hand bowlin is distinctly inferior to the right-hand bowlin because of its similarity to the left-hand sheet bend. But modern research has shown that the two versions of the bowlin have no real difference in residual breaking strength. In fact, the left-hand bowlin seems to be more secure when cross-loaded. So usually you can just use whichever version of these two bowline knots is more natural for you. One of the simplest and most useful variants of the bowline is the running bowline. This is simply a bowline loop where the standing end is running through the bowline loop itself to create a knot that tightens under tension. The most straightforward way to tie it is to run the bowline loop around your object, then feed the other side of the line through the bowline loop and pull it tight. If you have access to the end of the object you're tying to, you can form the running bowline without touching the other end of the line by feeding a bite into the bowline loop and inverting the bowline. Then just slide it over top of the object. You can also tie the running bowline by making your bowline around the standing end of the line. This is needed if you don't have access to the other end of the line and you don't have access to the end of the object. The running bowline requires very little dexterity to tie and it's easy to remember, especially if a bowline is already tied on one end of your line. So it's great in outdoor situations to start a clothesline or a tarp ridge line. You can consider leaving small bowlines tied on the end of your cordage before heading out into the wilderness for this very reason. You can use a bowline to cinch down a line around an object like a bedroll. With a small bowline on one end of the line, feed the other end around the object and through the bowline loop, like a running bowline. Now you can use the bowline loop as a crude pulley to get some mechanical advantage to tighten the line around the object. Lock the knot in place by pinching it and grabbing a bite and tying it into an overhand knot up against the bowline. You can then pull on the tag end to quickly release the knot. This is very similar to the idea behind a trucker's hitch, but tied using a loop of line rather than on a single end. Before moving on to more bowline variants, we'll look at a couple of knots that are again really just different ways to tie the same bowline knot in different situations. This is the around the body bowline, which could be used in an emergency rescue scenario. Wrap the line around your back with the working end in your right hand with about a foot or two of extra line beyond your hand. Bring the working end over top of the standing end and wrap your hand around it to make a loop. This motion should bring the working end into the middle of the loop. Bring the remaining working end around the standing end and back down into the loop. Pull your hand out of the loop along with the tag end and you should end up with the familiar bowline knot. When tying this version, try to make the bowline secure against your chest. Make sure there's at least six inches of tag end and you can tie an overhand knot on the remaining tag end to keep it from flopping around. The same around the body bowline method can also be tied using only one hand. If you somehow end up in an Aaron Ralston type situation, or more realistically you're holding onto a boat or a rock ledge, or you just don't have access to one hand for some reason. With the line around your back and the working end in your right hand, make a bite about a foot into the working end. Bring your right hand over the standing end and make the same rotation motion as before to form a loop, with the working end going through it. Now you just need to wrap the bite you made around the standing end and back down into the loop. Then pull the tag end out through the loop along with your hand. Note that you can also learn to perform the snap bowline method from earlier using only one hand, which is another reason why I love the snap bowline. Make a slip knot, feed the working end through the slip knot loop, and snap it into place. All of these one-handed methods assume that the standing end of the line is secured to something, like a rescue pulley or another person. 
The double bowlin is an even more secure version of the standard bowlin. Sometimes it's called the round turn bowlin to avoid confusion with a bowlin on the bite knot, which we'll see later. To tie the double bowlin, we'll use the rabbit mnemonic from before, but our hole will be made of two loops instead of one. Make two counterclockwise loops and place the loop closest to the working end on top of the other loop. Then proceed with the traditional method of tying a bowlin. Bring the rabbit up out of the hole, around the tree from right to left, and back down into the hole. Just like the bowlin is structurally related to the sheet bend, the double bowlin is structurally related to the stronger double sheet bend. When you need extra security, for example in life critical situations, you should prefer the double bowlin over a regular bowlin. The water bowlin is very similar to the double bowlin, except that when we make the two loops at the beginning, we put the loop closest to the working end on the bottom before proceeding. As its name suggests, this knot is apparently more secure for applications where the knot will get wet, for instance when towing something through water. Yet another way of making the traditional bowline more secure is the Yosemite bowline, or a bowline with a Yosemite finish. To tie the Yosemite finish, start by tying the standard bowline with plenty of extra tag end. Before fully tightening the bowline, Wrap the tag end around the back of the right side of the loop and up through the bowline U-shape to the right of the standing end. Now it's crucial that the Yosemite bowline be tightened in the correct way. First you must tighten the original bowline by pulling the standing end and the loop in opposite directions simultaneously. Only then can you tighten the working end. If you were to tighten the working end first, you could end up with this completely different knot, which is not secure. Because of the risk of tying this incorrectly, the utility of this knot is debated among climbers. So use it with caution. Always make sure you tighten the original bowline and only then tighten the tag end. The triple bowline is a way to get three loops in a piece of line. It can be tied in the middle of a rope without access to either of the ends. Just double the line to make a bite then treat the bite like the working end in the traditional bowline method. When you feed the bite back down into the hole, this will form your third loop. With some practice, you can get a feel for the sizing of the three loops. This can be used as a secure foothold on a line. Or to improvise an emergency bosun's chair in a rescue scenario. Use the first two loops as the leg holds and make the final loop larger to go around your upper body. There are other alternatives for improvising a bosun's chair which we'll see shortly, so you can choose which one is most comfortable for you. The bowline on a bite is a great way to get two fixed loops on a line. Like the triple bowline, it can be tied without access to the ends of the line. To tie it, start as we did with the triple bowline. Double the line to make a bite, then make our usual counterclockwise loop with the working end on top. Bring the bite up through the hole. But now, rather than going around the standing end, we'll take the bite and feed it over top of these two loops we made. Pull the excess line through and tighten everything. 
A bowline on the bite can be used anytime you need a loop or two loops in the middle of a line. For instance, to hang gear with toggles or as the pulley loop in a trucker's hitch. It can also be used to share a load between two anchor points, providing a backup should one of the two anchor points fail. Like the triple bowline, the bowline on a bite can be used as a foothold or as an emergency bosun's chair. But the Portuguese bowline we'll show next arguably makes a more comfortable bosun's chair. Another way to create two loops is the Portuguese bowline. This has the additional property that the size of the loops are adjustable after the knot has been tied. So you can use this for an off-center load on two anchor points. The first way to tie it is to proceed as you would for a normal bowline, again using a counterclockwise loop with the working end on top. But now make a second loop in the same direction that goes around your initial loop. Go up through both of these loops with the working end, around the back of the standing end from right to left, then back down through both of these loops. Tighten it up and that's the Portuguese bowline. Note that you can adjust the size of the loops by effectively trading some line from one of the loops to the other. Sometimes you might want to tie the Portuguese bowline directly around two fixed anchor points. To tie it this way, we'll use the same method, just being sure to wrap the loops around the two tie-out points as we tie the knot. Note that this view is upside down relative to the previous view, but it's exactly the same method, other than threading the line through the two anchor points. You can also tie a Portuguese bowline around your body for another version of the bosun's chair. Wrap the line around your back with enough tag end in your right hand to graze the ground from shoulder height. Bring the standing end in your left hand across your chest to your right shoulder. Then fling the working end in your right hand around your body and catch it. Bring your left hand down and feed the working end in your right hand up into the loop created by the line in your left hand. Then wrap the working end around the back of the standing end from right to left in typical bowlin fashion and back down into the loop. The tag end should be on the top side of the knot towards your head. Tighten everything up and adjust the loops so one sits below your butt and one sits on your back. This makes for a relatively comfortable chair to hang from. The Cossack Bolin is another variant of the standard Bolin knot, also known as an Eskimo Bolin. Functionally, it's the same as the traditional Bolin in that it gives you a fixed size loop, but it has a slightly different structure. To tie it, create a counterclockwise loop with the working end on top as usual. But now, instead of coming up out of the hole, we'll take the working end down into the hole and around the other side of the loop, not the standing end, from top to bottom and back up out of the hole so that the tag end is in the middle of the loop. This knot is essentially interchangeable with the traditional bowline in its applications, with the only real practical difference being the conditions under which it might capsize. Like the cowboy bowline, the Cossack bowline is more stable when ring-loaded than the traditional bowline. You can get a quick release version of the Cossack Bolin by using a bite in the last step, which creates a knot known as the Kalmic loop. To tie it, proceed as before, again going down into the hole and around the other side of the loop. But now bring a bite back up through the hole and tighten the knot. This is a secure fixed size loop that can be quickly untied by pulling on this tag end. 
For tying the Kalmic loop around an object, you can use the following method. Wrap the line around the object you're tying to with the working end in your right hand. Make sure you have about a foot of extra working end. Now reach underneath the standing end and grab the working end with your left hand and grab the standing end with your right hand. Wrap the standing end around your left hand once. Then using the fingers in your right hand, grab the working end and release the working end from your left hand. Now twist your left hand under the line and back over it and grab the working end from your right hand and pull a bite through the loop as you pull your hand out. This is a fixed size loop with a quick release. Great for securing one end of a ridge line for a tarp. Interestingly, neither the Kalmyk nor the Cossack appear in Ashley's Book of Knots, but they are mentioned in Lev Skriagin's Marine Knots and seem to be more popular in the Eastern world. When not loaded, the bowline can shake undone quite easily. To demonstrate this, I slapped the bowline against the table for a few seconds and it started to loosen surprisingly quickly. This could be an issue if you have an unloaded bowline flapping in the wind on a sailboat or dangling against a rock. So always make sure you're not as secure and dressed before loading it. Note that the double bowline doesn't seem to have this same insecurity. Also, as mentioned earlier, the bowline can fail more easily when ring loaded. So prefer the cowboy bowline or the Cossack bowline if you know the loop will be loaded on its sides. There are many other knots that share bowline in their name that we haven't included here. Most notably, the Spanish bowline and the tugboat bowline or flying bowline, which is actually an angler's loop. I've left these out because the only real similarity they share with the bowline is in their name. Structurally, they're actually quite different. So knowing the bowline doesn't really help you tie them or use them and they deserve their own separate videos. This concludes our guide to the bowline and its most useful variants. Subscribe for more in-depth knot tutorials and other outdoor content. Until next time.